everyone. On today's episode, you are gonna see us waking up the beds. So you might've seen our episode last year where we talked about how we put our gardens to bed and sort of why we do what we do. We showed a few different examples of a few different things that we do around the yard. And this year, you're gonna see how we wake them up for spring. Come and see. So here's an area where we decided to just let it be. Now, these nut trees drop their leaves and make a perfect cover for this garden. As soon as these trees' leaves fill in, it's gonna be a nice shady zone. It always stays nice and moist because the creek is right nearby. So even if the top layer of ground is kind of dry, it doesn't take much at all for their roots to reach down to a point where they can hit water all the time. So this is a really good spot that we just kind of let it be. Now, <clears throat> in here, you can see that things are starting to come up. Now, typically in gardens, where we have a thick layer of mulch or we have all these leaves coming down or we maybe we chop and drop or we mulch it ourselves. Once the plants start to grow up and get taller, we just pull the leaves back so that they can have an opportunity, the plant itself can have an opportunity to grow strong. Because if you have it all choked out from the sun, and then it can bleach the base of it and make it really weak. So then if you wait too long and you pull back the leaves, it'll be so weak down at the base that it'll just kind of want to flop over. So right now is the perfect time to just pull back the leaves. I leave, I, I'll leave them in lots of other areas. It's a good time too, always. I mean, every time is a good time to pull weeds. If you're there and you see a weed, pull it, you know? So I'm gonna get that guy out of there. And then yeah, let's open it up a little bit. And let him see the sun. Beautiful. Oh God, don't put that in there. I broke my handle. Or put it in there because you like to make fun of me. I like to make fun of me. So in this area here, we left as many of the plants tall as we could. Uh, it allows for birds to eat the seeds. It allows for bugs to make their homes and everything. And now we've gone through and we've cleared everything out. And it's just as simple as cutting back this stuff because we know we can see all of these biddies popping up now. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, so it's ready to go. So this is an area where we put down sawdust, which helps to bring more acidity to the soil, which blueberries love. Uh, and then we mulched it with some leaves. Now, I'm not planting anything in here right now. There's nothing that we need to open up at this point. So other than pulling whatever weeds I see that might have made it through, buttercup as always, uh, there's nothing really that we need to do in this area because the mulch is really doing its job. When you pull this back and you can see there's nothing under that soil, it's just really doing a beautiful thing. So we know that all of this is doing great and there's not much that we need to do to it right now. So these blueberries here, we just did a chop and drop. We didn't add any of the leaves over here. We didn't add any of the sawdust. We just took all of the peas that were growing around it and the cucumber vines that had been growing. We just allowed them to die back naturally on here and feed the soil. We definitely have more weeds over here than we did on the other side, but all in all, I think it's looking really good and they, they look really happy. We also added a bunch of the comfrey leaf in here with doing the chop and drop method. Uh, so this is all stuff that basically I'll probably just leave on here for the rest of the year. It depends on what we wanna plant in here. It, we might be seeding peas again, or we might just keep seeding our strawberries around these guys because the strawberries were really happy where we planted them over there under the blueberries. 
so. And we have so many to transplant. We have tons to dig up. Uh, they are really prolific spreaders. And so, you know, the more you grow, the more they go, which is cool. So I think we might just keep transplanting them uh, under the blueberries as we go. One good thing that or one thing that I that I will say about the difference between where we covered with leaves over there and made a really good thick layer of mulch, when I pulled those leaves back, the soil was damp and cool. Here, where there's nothing covering it, the soil is dry and there's actually no moisture. Like where I pulled this weed from, there was some moisture. It's quite dry. It's a little more moist here, but where I pulled the weeds out. But all in all, this is quite dry soil. I have to go quite a bit down to hit the moisture level. So that shows me just how much of a help the mulch is being over there for us with retaining moisture. Compared to these blueberries, when we pull back these leaves and everything, this soil is nice and damp and dark. It's really holding its moisture. So we know just from using our garden leaves, right? Like these leaves, you know, some people bag them up and get rid of them, but uh, why not use it to cut down on watering, right? Cut down on weeding, cut down on watering. So these beds here, we're also just gonna leave. We covered them nice and deep with the leaf mulch. And it's, like I said before, it's keeping down the weeds, it's keeping in the moisture. And uh, so we're definitely going to just leave this here until we're ready to plant, pull we whatever weeds we see that might be coming up on the edges. But for the most part, this area is still good to go for a while, probably until I'd say mid-April or beginning of May when we plant stuff out in here. So all along in this area, what we did was we just kind of took the plant matter and we break it off and we just kind of almost wrap it around. So we break it down so it's not just standing tall and all over the place. It's actually acting like a bit of a protection barrier. So just kind of wraps the plant up and tucks it in nice and tight to hibernate for winter. When they're just starting to pop up and their tender little shoots are coming out, but uh, we still have frosting overnight and everything, this just kind of helps to protect them just a little bit. It's just a bit of a barrier between them and the cold nights that just helps them to come along a little bit more. Now all we do in the springtime is we come along and that stuff that we wrapped around it, we just pull off and we're left with these beautiful protected shoots that look so happy and absolutely lovely. So the other reason that I do it to certain plants like this but not to others is that when something is an aggressive seeder, like it'll just self-seed all over the place, I like to be strategic with it sometimes. So whereas here, I wanna keep this yarrow nice and condensed so there's patches of yarrow but all sorts of other stuff in between, I turn these branches in on themselves when they go to seed so that they seed within this area and don't tend to stray quite as far. Now there's lots of places where I leave my yarrow to seed as freely as it wants to. I seeded yarrow and echinacea, echebecchia, all sorts of things all over the fields. And in any of those areas, I just let them self seed and continue on doing their thing. Same with poppies, all sorts of stuff. I just let them do it in certain areas so that they can create as much wildlife habitat as possible as much beauty as possible. But like I said, in areas like this circle where I wanna be just a little more strategic, I just really have a vision for things, that's when I take something like this that's gonna spread like crazy. I keep its seeds as tight as possible. And then I will cut this back as time moves on. You can see the yarrow already spreading out all over into here. 
So it's actually cool in some respects because these bulbs are going to die back and be ugly. And when they're dying back and ugly, this yarrow is actually gonna hide them and they'll be allowed to do their thing as naturally as possible, let their greens die back and feed those bulbs, but the yarrow will make it so we don't have to look at it when it's not as cute. <laughs> Next year, I'll probably cut this back so that I can transplant it into other places because I know I want this to just stay a little more compact. So I could easily cut this off right here, transplant this whole thing. I could easily cut that into four or even six pieces and transplant it off somewhere else that uh, it's gonna live its best life. So in this area here is where we did our successional cover cropping. Now the soil was super compact and what we did was we actually did lentils through here and then let them grow. When they reached their peak bioavailability, then we turned those into the soil and we planted oats. We let the oats grow up as tall as they could before winter and just fall back and do their natural natural cycle and then we've left it here as an active mulch that's cutting down on weeds and locking in moisture. It also adds a ton of great minerals and nutrients into our soil which is super important for the beautiful little microbes that are living in there making it such a wonderful web of life so that we can grow the plants that we want to grow. So with this cover crop, this is another area where we don't need to do anything to it right now, except for when we see weeds, we pull them. That's it. We know that we're not gonna be planting this garden bed until later on in the season. So basically right now, we're just gonna let it do its thing. When you come under this mulch, you can see how dark and beautiful that soil is and how moist it is. It's really, really wonderful. So it's definitely done its job and we are very, very happy with how it looks and happy that our dahlias are gonna go in here because, oh, uh, I mean, who doesn't love the dahlias? Okay, so I think that's it for today. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed seeing sort of the next step of what we do here in spring. You've seen before us putting our beds to bed and now this is us starting to wake them up. There's still some areas that we're gonna leave for a while, but there's some that are just ready and busy bustling and uh, we're just, we're so happy to be here. We're so happy to see the sunshine and spring and all of these beautiful bees. Oh my goodness, the bees are everywhere. And from all of us here at the Wilson Lawn Wilson, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And I hope we see you again on Friday when we share our big Sunday Funday episode. Have a great day.